Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'll be trying to find monthly seasonal patterns using ETFs. So I'm trying to make this backtest as diverse as possible. So I'm including some national ETFs, some US-based indices, sector-based ETFs, and some miscellaneous ETFs, such as inverse ETFs, and some commodity ETFs as well. So I'm placing my tickers here, getting the data from Yahoo Finance, and this will include data from the year 2000 until present. I'm gonna send all the data into this new environment and extract only the adjusted closes and store it into this variable called all. I'm gonna do some formatting and drop the adjusted in the column name so that I just have the ticker name as column names. I'm gonna use NALOCF for NA handling. And since I'm requesting data for multiple tickers, this takes a couple of minutes to download. So I went ahead and saved my environment as an image just to save us this step. So I'll go ahead and load up that data. All right, so if we take a look at that XTS object, we have a total of 64 different tickers. And of course, some of these ETFs were in trading back in the year 2000. So I'm going to exclude those from the back test. Now to get the monthly ranks, I have built a function where we just pass in the stock or the ticker name, and we need a rank type. So here you can choose from the following four. It'll rank by monthly return, by gain, or the number of wins each month, by drawdown or the average drawdown or by the sharp ratio. So if we open up this function, once we pass in the ticker name, I'm gonna extract the data from our XTS object. I'm gonna exclude any NAs and calculate the monthly return. Depending on what you choose here on rank type, it'll choose between any of these categories. So say you wanted to rank by return. If we open this up, I will subset by month, calculate the mean each month, and round everything to four decimal places. So this very first line extracts only January for all of the years. And again, I'm just using the mean. So depending on what you choose by rank type, it'll extract the monthly returns and then do the calculation, return all of the months, and then combine everything as a data frame, including the stock or ticker name. So if we go through an example, I'm gonna go ahead and minimize this and run the function. So since I have four rank types, I'm gonna use PBL apply and get the monthly ranks by each. So this will get by return, the following will get by gain, and so on. So if I run these four, and since this block returns a list, I'm gonna go ahead and row bind all the data so that we get all of our tickers all together. So let's take a look at this very first one, which should have the ranks by return. So this is what the data frame looks like. And here we make sure that we have 64 different rows, which equals the number of tickers or ETFs. So let's do a rank in December by highest to lowest. So each December on average, since VXX started trading, it has returned approximately 8.5%, ranking it as number one for the December month. So now that we have the table, I'm gonna go ahead and select the top four best performing ETFs each month and see how that has performed throughout the years. I also included a short option. So if you select the short option, it'll select the bottom four and it'll short the bottom four. So all in all, you have the option to go long only, or if you choose the short option, then this will become a long short portfolio. All right, so let's go back to our script. Now this following block just gets you the monthly returns for each of the stocks, which will be later used in our back test. So we'll go ahead and run this since we need it. So this function, as I mentioned previously, will select the top four best performing ETFs each month, all equal weight. And I also included a short option. So if this is set equal to true, it will short the same number of assets you are longing. So if we open up this block for the long only, I will select the top four best performing assets, get the monthly return, convert that back into an XTS object, do some NA handling, format the column names and return that XTS object. Similarly, if we choose the short option, but it'll do the same in the inverse. So all that's really changing is the order here. So the order will be in ascending order, rank from smallest to highest. And the other thing that changes is that we need to multiply our returns by negative one since we're shorting. So those are the only two things that really change for each of the blocks. And if we choose the short option, it'll combine the long and short. Otherwise, it'll just return the longs. So we'll go ahead and compare both. So I'm gonna go ahead and minimize this and run this function. So MO are our ranks. So I'm gonna pass in our ranks by return, gain, drawdown, and sharp. MO RET is our monthly returns for each of the tickers. The number of assets we're choosing is four. 
these four lines will be for long only and the following will include the shorts. So I'll go ahead and run these lines. I'll go ahead and combine all the longs and shorts together along with the S&P 500 ETF and this composite will include the long and the shorts along with the S&P 500 ETF. So let's go ahead and run these three lines and let's go ahead and plot the longs only. And if we take a look at that chart, we do see in fact that the black line, which is by return, outperforms the S&P by a long shot, along with the other three, which are by gain, by drawdown, and by sharp ratio. And all of them do seem to have a very low drawdown compared to the S&P 500 ETF. So now let's take a look at the portfolios if we include the shorts. So this is including shorts. So we get higher returns and each of these categories outperforms the S&P as well. Our drawdowns seem to be minimal compared to the S&P 500, and the monthly returns seem to be on the positive side more than they are on the short side. Of course, we do see a couple of returns less than negative 10%, and again, the buy return seems to outperform all others. Now let's take a look at the returns all together. So we'll run this following line, and if we zoom in on the plot, so it seems that overall, the best portfolio is the buy return, including the shorts. And we can also see what the returns look like if we include or exclude the shorts. So this is the equity curve if we do include the shorts versus not including them. And you could take a look at each category along with their drawdowns. So it looks like for a couple of years, they were on track, but it almost seems that after 2008, this gap gets wider and wider. So now let's take a look at the next block. You can also filter by year. So if we take a look at the composite for the year 2021, we check to make sure that things are remaining consistent. So the S&P 500 is this red line and we do see some outperformance on our portfolios. So that's what we wanna see. Now let's take a look at the stats. So here if we run table of stats from performance analytics, this will get you your portfolios along with the benchmark, which is the S&P 500. So we have a total of 263 months, the minimum return per strategy. So the S&P as a reference is almost negative 16 and a half in a single month. If we take a look at the buy drawdown portfolio, it's almost half, but not so much if we include the shorts. The one I really like is the buy sharp portfolio, which has a similar drawdown, but the geometric mean is in between the buy return and buy gain while also having a lesser minimum value here on a per month basis. So taking a look at the geometric means, the buy return seems to have the highest, of course. Buy drawdown seems to have the lowest in both the long and the shorts. But if we take a look at the benchmarks geometric mean, it seems to be the worst performer. We also take a look at the max return. So for the long onlys, they seem to fluctuate around 20%. But if we do include the shorts, then the maximum seems to be hovering around 40 to 50%, while our benchmark is only 12 or close to 13. And one thing I also like to look at is the standard deviation. So the standard deviation for our benchmark is 4%. We do see a higher standard deviation for the ranks by return and a comparable standard deviation if we use the sharp ranks and a lower standard deviation if we use the drawdown ranks. If we include the shorts, then our standard deviation actually increases, but we do see a correlation between higher risk and higher return. So let's go back to our script. We can also view the correlations between our portfolios and our benchmark. So here I'll go ahead and run this. So the long only portfolios have a correlation of 0.4 to 0.5 or almost 0.6. But if we include the shorts, then our correlations drop. So almost no correlation between our drawdown ranks if we include the shorts versus our benchmark, which is pretty good. Now let's take a look at the annualized returns for each of the portfolios. All right, so for the annualized returns, for the long only, we have between 0.2 and 0.4. If we include shorts, we have a minimum of almost 0 0.6 to 0.97 versus the S&P, which is 0 0.07. So this is what we want to see. So now say I want to trade December. I want to extract the tickers for that month. So I created a function. We pass in the month. 
what rank table we want to use, the top N or the number of ETFs you want to use, and whether you want to short or not. So if we run this, and here I'm just going to select December MO4 is for the sharp ranks. I want to select the top four. Should I include the shorts? We'll set that equal to true. So if we run this, and if we take a look at our console, now we have the top four that we should long and the top four that we should short. So that gets us the tickers fairly quickly. If you want to see the performance of those tickers, we would run the following lines. So for the month of December, we'll take a look at how these ETFs perform individually. And we do see here for the top four, we see a consistent move to the upside, which are the ETFs we are longing. And for the short side, we kind of do see a trend to the downside. So all four are below the zero line, but I don't really see a consistent move to the downside as we do to the upside. So that's one thing to note. And if you take a look at those combined, this is the cumulative return. So we had a nice run up between the year 2000 and 2008. If we were to only trade December, kind of flatlined. And ever since 2014, it seems to have picked up. Not by much, but it seems to be trending in the right direction. So you can do this for any month that you choose. Right now, I'm just focused on December. Now let's take a look at the next part. So now let's see how the Sharp portfolio performs. If we select one, four, five, or 10 tickers and see if there's any variation. I'm gonna combine all of these portfolios together along with our benchmark. Here I'm just gonna do some renaming for the columns so we can identify which portfolio belongs to which. I'm gonna go ahead and plot these. So if we were to only select the top one ticker, long and short, we see that that equity curve actually underperforms the rest. Up until very recently, the S&P 500 is this blue line here. If we were to use the top 10 tickers, it seemed to have outperformed up until 2013. And the ones that have stayed relatively consistent throughout and have been outperforming or if we choose four or five tickers. So you can play around with the numbers depending on your preference. And there is some bias in this back test since we're only selecting those that have outperformed each and every month. But as I mentioned before, this will get you a start in the right direction. So with that said, this is not investment advice. Well, this concludes the video guys. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already and I'll see you guys in the next video.